welcome you back. It's the Vine Morning Show on a Monday, and we welcome those watching on our YouTube channel today, on Cable TV Channel 15, and also on uh, our YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in. And we welcome you to the Vine Morning Show on a Monday. I'm Mark. It's great to have you along, and it's great to have our good friend Laura Greenhouse in the studio with us this morning. And good morning, Laura. How are you this morning? Good morning, Mark. I love the music. Wow. All right. That's good stuff. Yeah, you like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's uh, Fifth of Beethoven for a okay. lot of people that might remember good. Uh, that. Yeah. yeah, well, it's great to have you in. You have Thank a nice you. weekend. I really did. We went to visit the Rock again and uh-huh. had a great time and... Got a story for you guys about uh, one of the Gideons came. Up at the Rock and Centralia. Yes, awesome. Yes. So yeah. it was great. How about you and Sherry? Yeah, and it was a very nice weekend. Okay. Yeah, we had a chance uh, to uh, do some things on Saturday and okay. just a beautiful uh, just a beautiful weekend. You yes. know, I, a lot of people, we saw a lot of people out on uh, the weekend and Saturday. Yes. And uh, it was just absolutely gorgeous, and um, yes, yeah, and we've got. Uh, I think we're finally here with that that weather. I do too. Yes, I really do. You know, my dad um, was talking about all the frogs out in his house. I'm like, that's the thing I mm-hmm. miss living in town is I love to fall asleep to the sound of those croaking frogs. I really, really do. And he says, well, you know what? He says, you tell Lucy, come on out and. And uh, we'll get her some frogs because she's always into stuff like that. <laughs> and he scooped her up. We went out there on Saturday, and it was so beautiful. Oh, my goodness. It just gave you a, mm-hmm. a different perspective and scooped up crawdads and snails and everything out of this little mud hole, I'll call it. And I'm telling you what, we had so much so fun. So much fun. Isn't that fun to get out and do stuff like that? Yes, is. You've been trapped in mm-hmm. and these pretty days, and you could actually get out and you could do something fun, and it, it just changed your whole world. It sure does. Mm-hmm. Hey, and before we start with you this morning, I want to mention yeah. something, and I mentioned it a couple of times this morning, and I want to mention it while you're here. Uh-huh. Uh, speaking of Saturday, there was an event, you know, high school proms are going on yes. right now. They're going mm-hmm. on and will be coming up. But DeCoin had one uh, on Saturday night, and apparently it was a, a moving evening because not hardly, from my understanding, not hardly a dry eye in the gym really? uh, Saturday. And uh, what happened was uh, a girl by the name of Brenna Asbury was uh, crowned the homes or the high school proms queen Saturday night. Okay. Now Brenna is a down suffers from Down syndrome, oh, so wow. the whole student body Ooh. of DeCoin High School voted her <laughs> as prom queen. So kudos to those. Yes. To the whole student body of DeCoin High School. How awesome I is that for that little girl? That. I Isn't love that. Something? that. Yeah. I really do. And you know what? That's something that I hope to get into today also. It's talking about your purpose and what God wants you to do. And we're always mm-hmm. busy doing all these things. But what does God want us to do? He wants us to make that little girl's amen, day. Amen. And, and and whoever really rightfully would have gotten not rightfully, but you know mm-hmm. what I'm trying to say. The one that probably would have gotten it mm-hmm. to step down so unselfishly mm-hmm. and to let that child have a chance. Amen. Amen. My you know, goodness. Yeah, I, apparently she was just so overcome with joy and it was just so touching to oh, those that were in wow. attendance. And I guess I guess <laughs> the whole gym uh, was just in tears. And you know, I you know, bet. it's that's part of paying it forward. That's right. You know, that's and right. you know, praise God for the students at DeCoin High School and you know, God will remember that. God will Absolutely. honor all those students that voted this girl with Down syndrome in. Absolutely. And you know, in a society where it's all about me. That's right. You know, and, and I gotta get the best, prettiest picture of me and post it on fa- Facebook so all my friends will, you know, yay, yay, yay and, and give me all these likes and stuff. And for a child and Mark, think about it. Some of our most selfish times are our younger years. That's true. Yes. Not always, but often. Mm-hmm. That's when we're most self-absorbed. And for that age group of kids to do that when, you know, a lot of times it's just about me. That's right. It really is. We've right. all been there. Yes. And still battle with it. Mm-hmm. Um, but for them to do that. And you know what? Think about that. You could have gone through the thing and picked the most popular kids like normally mm-hmm. happens, mm-hmm. you know, the most right. that may be the prettiest or the most athletic or the smartest or whatever it might be that pulls them into that category for them. You think they would have enjoyed it even close to that if they would have picked one of those kids that just mm-hmm. always gets picked. Sure, sure. No, 
no way this is life changing mm-hmm. this will ripple down and maybe other kids you know i have to brag on um Casey Junior High, one of the first years I think I was on the board, they have um, their valedictorians and they let uh, one of the special ed kids be a valedictorian. Wow, that's awesome. It It is. is. That is just awesome. And you know what, Mark? Some people had a fit about it. Oh, my. That's the truth. That's bad. That's it's awesome for that child. Be but it's bad that people would do that. Yes, people. And you know what? Hey, if out of her class. She was the, the the best, the supreme student. Let her do it. Amen. I think it was wonderful. I think mm-hmm. it was awesome. But some people absolutely had a fit about that. And I'm thinking, your perspective is so narrow mm-hmm. and, and just in such a wrong place that shame on mm-hmm. anybody that, that had that thinking. Sure, so, sure. Anyway, this school is amazing. I, I just wanted to mention that <laughs> because, so you know, that, that is awesome. And, and you know, and I, I hope that by this, and my, this is my personal, and I talked to someone this morning about this, I hope, and this is our opinion, that we hope that this sets precedence for other schools yes. that will follow suit. Absolutely. Somewhere down the road, not not maybe this year, but somewhere down the road. Yes. Think about someone that may not be as fortunate as you are. Right. God still loves that person just as much as God Absolutely. would love maybe a, a queen that doesn't yes. have the issue like like young Brenna has. Right. But this will be something. Not only will the students have voted her in, remember, yes. for years to come, oh, but this little yes. girl will remember <laughs> this for the rest of her life. <laughs> I just think it's, I wish I could have been there. Oh, me too. Really? Me really, too. For that moment. And, and you know, we should have more moments like that, Mark. I agree. Really. We it, should. It's, it's what life is all about, and it's doing our part. That's right. You know, I was listening to, and I've said this before, but another preacher made this comment about success. Mm-hmm. What is success? Success is finding what God wants you to do and do it. Mm-hmm. And that's a whole life purpose, but that's also a daily purpose. That's also a dance purpose. Look at them. Don't you know God was proud? Oh, yeah. Oh! You know that. You know that. I mean, it probably brought tears to God's eyes. And how many times are we thinking, I want to move God? Mm-hmm. I want to bless God. No, we're thinking about I want to bless me. I mm-hmm. want to bless my day. I want to go get me something new that I'll look really cute in. And, and I want to get me some snappy car that when I zoom around the corner that my hair's going to blow and I'm going to impress everybody watching. Mm-hmm. You know, we think about sure, that, don't we? Sure, absolutely. You know? yeah. But I just think that, you know, what what are we doing here, Mark? What are we doing here? You know what the number one question for Christians is, what is my purpose? Mm-hmm. What is my purpose? You know, and we've got to think about that. What is our purpose? What is what is it God has strengthened us? Where has he given us the abilities? Where has he given us um, desires? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bless the person that had that idea, that had that desire and followed it. That's right. Just think if they would have said, no, nah, that's stupid. Nobody will go for that. My ideas are never good. Everything I come along with is, is just two thumbs down. What if we all had that whenever we had a great idea? Sure. It's Satan. That's it's right. Satan. It's right on your shoulder and telling you, don't go through with that. Yes. Nobody's going to go for that. You're silly. You don't have a great idea. But what if that person that had that idea or that small group that was inspired to do that just would have tucked it under a rug mm-hmm. and it never would have gotten done. Mm-hmm. We can't listen to Satan. You know, I heard um, Dwayne Vanderclock, I think was his name, says, if you're undecided on what to do, if it's good, if it's going to uplift somebody, if it's going to benefit somebody, just do it. Mm-hmm. Just do it. And I'm thinking that's good. But we have to think and we have to consider what are our abilities. Now, no doubt that person that did that had the ability to gather people, mm-hmm. had the confidence to say, hey, I've got an idea. Why not turn this thing upside down this year and bless somebody's socks off, you know? That's right just think that's awesome you know so many of us are are doing things that god never intended us to do mm-hmm. doing things that he never called us to do he's looking for holiness he's looking for purity he's looking for somebody that will show god's image in them mm-hmm. and people and not a dry eye my goodness you think people weren't seeing god and feeling god's yeah, presence you know what that's what i was thinking i was thinking you know the holy Woo! spirit is you know 
he's raining on that high school gym Absolutely. that night because mm. of what has happened. Absolutely. You know, and, and and you stop and you think about it, people don't realize, yeah, he is. He's really yes. he's gonna bless those kids and their yes. future endeavors Absolutely. for what they did for that little girl. Absolutely. You know what, Mark? I hope that makes national news. I wished it would. Mm-hmm. I think so. I really I hope, so. hope that it just goes viral and that it makes national news because it's helping bring out the real part of us, mm-hmm. the true part of us. And, you know, that's a lie from the pits of hell that the more stuff you get, the more you spend on yourself, the more time and, and effort you spend on you is what's going to make you happy. That is a lie from hell. That's right. It really yeah, that's is. That's true. You know, I heard Jonathan Kahn talking about so many times women, he dogged on the women first, which was fine, spend all these hours in the bathroom. And he says they're constantly pouring into their outward beauty. But what if they took that time and poured it into their inner beauty? Mm, I like that. Wasn't that good? That is good. And he talked about how inner beauty never fades. And it doesn't. It never spoils. The enemy can never steal that. Inner beauty is forever. It really is. And he says, men, you know, you're spending all this time getting great at sports or weightlifting. And and there's nothing wrong, I always want to say, with these things. But whenever we're spending more time lifting weights or walking our two miles a day, and, you know, I'm, I'm kind of beating on my own ground here right now. If we're spending more time doing that than we are in the Word of God, you know. Sure. If we would just turn that and change that. In just a week, two weeks, three weeks, whatever, maybe even that day, we would notice a true difference. I agree. So I agree. getting getting to find out what God wants us to do. And that school, don't you think, undoubtedly, undeniably, that was God's will for their prom. And somebody saw it fit to bring up that, that idea. And then there were feet put to it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Feet. Mm-hmm. Well, scattering this thought around, and don't you know there was opposition, Mark? Oh, I'm sure. You know what? I'm sure <laughs> there was, and, and and it did make news. It made news on on uh, local TV station okay, down in, uh, Channel Three. Good. Uh, and in fact, our good friend Barry pointed it out. He sent me a message oh, last night. Good. I wanted to know if I'd mention. I said absolutely, oh, I'll mention so it. it. Needs glad. if it made it on if it made it on TV, it needs to be on radio. Absolutely, and that's what we're here for. That's right. It's positive. It's positive, it and that's is. the thing. That's the thing yeah. we have to remember. It's a positive news. It's Absolutely. uplifting news. Absolutely. It is good, and we do need that because sometimes mm-hmm. we get bogged down with, with hard things. But, you know, we need to use something like this as a launching pad I agree. to do more. I agree. I agree. you got to begin somewhere. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, we've brought this up before, but like that one child, um, I believe it was uh, a handicap race, mm-hmm. and that fell, and she stops and picks her up. Mm-hmm. And... We need to, we need to, you you know what, I got to say this, one of my best friends has an older brother with Down syndrome, and his mom, her mom, the, the older sibling is a boy, and she said, if I could go back and change and have him to be mentally normal, I wouldn't do it. Mm. He has been the sweetest, most precious, loving child. And she says, you know what? So many people would look at that as um, I, I, I got dealt a bad card. Mm-hmm. But you speak to the parents and the families of those children, and they will tell you it's been the biggest blessing of our life. And the world wants to look at them like they're less than perfect. The world's wrong. Mm -hmm. The world wants to look at them like they are um, a burden. Mm -hmm. The world's wrong. And we need to emphasize that. And we need to look at it through different eyes, through different glasses. These children are, they're very meaningful and they're very purposeful in this life. And they can teach us a lesson. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree. That's That's good. That's good. Well, I didn't want to get you off track of what you you want to talk about. Oh, it doesn't matter. I just thought that. God just put that on my heart to talk about it more so with you here this morning. Yeah, so. that's you know that's right up my alley, Mark. All right, I, I know, and that's why that's why I wanted to, <laughs> wanted to mention it so for you glad. this morning. All so right, glad. what what else? Okay. We got a lot to talk about, well, you know, don't we? Yes. Yeah. Um. Uh. Coming up, I would like to share the Gideon story, and and uh, you know, there's just some headlines and some things that whether we want to know about them, we need to know about them, and 
and some very exciting things happening. So, yeah, hoping we can just kind of dive into we it. We will. We're going to do that when we come back here in the 9 o'clock hour. All right, we're going to get started on that as we are heading into 9 o'clock. And more to come this morning. The Vine Morning Show on this Monday with Laura continues right here at Real Life Radio. This is your home for... That's from Group One Crew here at Real Life Radio 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine. It's music and ministry and local Christian radio that is always uplifting and encouraging each and every day. It is 9.09. We welcome you back. It's The Vine Morning Show on a Monday morning. I'm Mark along with Laura this morning. And Laura, we're going to talk, you want to share a little bit about purpose with us this morning, Yes, right? sure. there was a few more things that I found that I thought were, were so good that we need to pass them on. Mm-hmm. Um, it being the number one question question that Christians usually ask, what is my purpose, that we need to spend a little bit of time on this to mm-hmm. help everyone, help myself. Um, you know, we we always need to take an inventory of our life, don't we, well, I think we do. I think we, you know, we need to take an inventory more often than we do. Yes, right. Um, this little piece here says, our days are filled with busyness to the point where we don't take time to listen to our lives. Quieting yourself and answering the following questions will help you uncover your passion. So if you are kind of wondering what your purpose is in life, these are just a few simple questions that might um, stir your thinking Mm -hmm. and help you. Because, you know, time, you know, Mark and I both agree, time's running short. And whatever it is we're supposed to be doing for God, we better get to be doing it. Mm -hmm. We really need to because uh, there are souls that, that could be in trouble if we don't get our lives. I heard somebody, someone, uh, I was talking with someone the other day, and they said, we need to step up our game plan. Yeah. And I'm Ooh. thinking, that's good. I like that. <laughs> and that is kind of, yeah, yeah, on the road that we're already on. That's exactly right. This first question says, if money were not an issue, what would you do with your time? Now, that's pretty deep. Mm-hmm. Boy, that, you know, and I can see a lot of people thinking right now hard yeah. about that. Yeah, if money was no object, if, if you just had an open-ended checking account and you could go right now, what would you do? What would you do? Would you buy a big building? Would you buy a recording studio? Would you buy um, some manufacturing plant and put a whole bunch of Christian people to work? I mean, I don't know. What, what would it be? You know, I've heard many people say, whatever it is, Start doing it in little tiny means what you can now. Mm. Whatever you have the ability to do right now, start doing that. And you got to do what you can do. God's not going to do what you can do. He's there to do what we can't do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's there to do the impossible. He's not going to let us just be lazy. And Pastor Steve talked a little bit about that yesterday. He said, you know, you've got to move. You've got to do some things. And... How deep would our faith be if we just sit there and God threw it in our lap? Everything. Mm -hmm. Not very deep. Mm -hmm. Number two, what do you love to do and what do you hate to do? Can you think of some things in your life that you just love? You can't wait. I mean, getting up early is no problem if you get to go do fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. That's true. It really is. And and getting up early sometimes when we have to do something that we hate to do. Well, what's that? You know, I hate book work. I hate sitting down and and doing any type type of book work at all. It's not my calling. It's not my thing. Just not very good at it. Mm-hmm. But you know what do I? I love prophecies. I mean, Mark, if Jonathan Kahn was here in town or one of those big prophecy. Oh, my goodness. I believe I could get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you know, I, I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, it was Thursday. I was talking to someone, and um, they were skeptic about a lot of things going on in today's world. And then we, we've we been talking and sharing some things that's going on, and we kind of we're kind of like news partners. We're ah. kind of sharing things about what's going on in the world okay. today and, and how it's lining up with biblical prophecy. Mm-hmm. And that's a great idea. Get you a, like an accountability partner. Yes. Share stories, share events that's yes. going on, point things out that's going on in the world today and keep each other updated and just follow along with what's happening. Yes. And then read about it in scripture. Absolutely. Look it up. Study it for yourself. That's what it's all 
laid out there for us to do. Right, absolutely. And I like how you said that. Get somebody, get with somebody, because one person can absorb you, we don't have the time. We don't. We can't be watching two stations at once. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have got to inform one another. So oh, I agree. I love yeah. that. Yeah. I love that because we've got to learn from one another. There's just that's just what we do. Mm-hmm. Um, number three was what gives you energy, or what drains the life out of you. Mm. Thinking about those things that you know, there are some things that just makes your heart almost skip a beat. Mm-hmm. You know, some things. Oh, I love that. Oh, that's so exciting. And and my sister texted me this morning about in Japan the earthquake. Yeah, and it actually moved a mountain. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness! And I mean, it just gives me chills. Well, you know, the one in Ecuador, the seven point eight one in Ecuador. Some people in different parts of the world have felt that. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, so, know you know, that. so yeah, they're feeling that. Or the capability of feeling it, the aftershocks later on. Oh, my yeah. goodness. So, if the, you know, if they can, if that can be moved in, in Japan, oh. mountains can be moved, yeah, what's that sending? What, what, yes. what message is that sending? Right. That we Abs- can feel the after effects from Ecuador. Absolutely. Was 240 people killed in Ecuador? 200, I just read this about an hour ago, 272 now. Oh They've my. updated it. And oh they, my. they say it's, that's, they're still calculating. Oh, sure. Mm-hmm. You know, and to pause on that, an earthquake could happen anywhere at any time, Mark. Exactly. What if that was here? And some of your family members were unaccounted for, some of my family members unaccounted for, lying under rubble. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What would matter? Nothing. Mm-mm. Nothing else would Mm-mm. matter but finding them. Exactly. You know, that is, whew, that, that's, you know, there's just too many prophetic voices speaking that America's covering is removed, and we're going to get it. We're going to get it. And we have got to be prepared. We've got to be prepared spiritually. We say this often, but being in God's will is the safest place you can be, even in an earthquake, Mm -hmm, Mark. mm -hmm. Absolutely it is. And we've got to get ready because we know, we know. And I've got a list of things here of things we've done to mock God in our country and how we've moved from him, it's chilling. Ooh, it's wow. really chilling. I can't wait to hear them. Yeah, some really interesting things. Um, I've got three more here. What do you want to change, shape, and leave better than you found it? Mm. What, if you had the ability to change some things, really help some person, some situation, some outreach, what is it that you would do? Once again, do it on a small scale what you can start right now, Mm -hmm. right now, because you can make a difference, even on a budget. Mm -hmm. You know, those kids you think about, I keep reflecting back to this, but what did that cost them kids at DeCoin? Nothing. How hard is it to write down, I want to stand with this child. Mm -hmm. I want to vote for this young girl. I see special things in her. Mm -hmm. You know, that cost them nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Number five, what segment, this is good, Mark, what segment of the population are you drawn to help? You know, there's so many people that want to help kids. There's so many people that feels drawn to a men's ministry, a woman's ministry, uh, a battered woman's ministry, Mm -hmm. um, a neglected child ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, what is it that you're drawn to? What do you want to help? What has God laid on your heart that you have special sympathy for, empathy for? What is it? Maybe sick people, Mm -hmm. elderly. Mm -hmm. You've got to think, what is it? You know, there's some people, oh, I couldn't work at a nursing home. Those people dying and, and those people in such pain you know what but there's some people that can Mm -hmm. they've got the back for it they've got the brain for it they've got the emotions for it and one of my one of my best friends in the world she helps the elderly and it's so hard when they die and and i'm not saying she doesn't mourn she mourns but she's drawn to them Mm -hmm. oh she'll go to their house whatever they need and she'll just help them and assist them and and if they need some strawberries she'll run back to town and bring some strawberries back to them That's what she does. Mm -hmm. Number six, what do you want to experience? What do you want to witness? And what do you want to learn? Mm -hmm. What are the things that you just can't get enough information on? You can't learn enough. You know, I I love nutrition. I don't talk about it much anymore, but I, 
I just can't get enough of it. Prophecy has taken the place. It's number one, and I believe that's where God has driven me and moved me through many circumstances, hard ones, and and just just circumstances. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. He's moved me to a different direction, but I still love nutrition. I still believe in it. I still do it for myself and and love it and. Oh, I can get sidetracked in my daily work, you know, look up something. Oh, that's really interesting. He's talking about the gallbladder or the liver or whatever. And, and I'm like, I forever. And I, I just, I'm so proud of The Rock. You know, they tithe. Mm-hmm. We talked about that, I believe, a couple weeks ago. And I don't know how many churches are actually tithing, but it is very, very important for you to tithe yourself and for your church to tithe. Because how many places are you going to get a better deal than this? You give me the Lord, the top 10%, the first fruits, the first part, and I'll bless the 90%. Mm-hmm. You're not going to get a better deal than that at the bank mm-hmm. anywhere. That's true. And even as a church, we've got to remember, we have got to tithe as a church because we want the Lord to bless our money, mm-hmm. to bless our tithes and bless our church that we are choosing right now. And they give to the Gideons. Every month is, is one of their means of giving. And I love that. Mm-hmm. If I heard that old guy right, I believe, don't quote me on it, but I believe he said they'd given like 44 million Bibles away. Away. Mm. And you imagine, you imagine how many lives they've changed. And even um, Pastor Steve said this, he said one time in the deepest, darkest times of his life and he said that he said i mean i had nothing i had everything removed from me and he was somewhere in dallas texas and and for a meeting or something and he said that he was crying out to the lord and he had forgotten his bible and he says just like clockwork you can always count on it he pulled that drawer Mm -hmm. open and that gideon bible was there there. it was there and he says i never played russian uh bible roulette uh they call it he said never really played that but he said i i know so many people said it just fell open to just exactly what i needed and he said that was a stiff bible a hard bible and that tells you a lot Mm -hmm. not many people have cracked it open but he said i did just open it and it fell open to the last chapter of job Mm. You know, and you think about how Job lost everything, but he was restored and he gained back even more than he lost. Mm -hmm. It's a profound story. And if you're one out there and and you're desperate, open that Bible. Pray that God will lead you, guide you and direct you. Go straight to the, the book of John, which is a good place to start. Go straight to Job and look what all that poor man went through. Do you know anybody that's faced more than Job? I don't. I don't either. No, me either. I mean, I've heard some pretty bad stuff too, Mark, but I can't think of anybody that's faced more than than Job did. Um, But the Gideons is a good thing. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing to give to if you're looking for a place to to give your money. Um, And it was a powerful story. And that shows you that these things do matter. And yes, Probably hundreds and thousands of Bibles got accepted in the hand, sit down, and never picked up again. But that's not our problem. Hmm. That's not our business. That's not our problem. Our problem is to give, 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 give. And if it falls on some good soil, wonderful. Because we don't know. Mm -hmm. We don't know who's going to grab onto it and who isn't. We just got to keep passing them out. Keep giving. So pray for the Gideons and, and encourage um, different ones to pray for them and give to them if you feel it led on your heart. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, so that's so. good. I like that. Yeah, that's anyway, good. Anyway, okay. it was a good story. That is a good story. Okay, well, come back here in a moment. Where do you yeah. want to go with yeah. the next story? Let's yeah. just talk about some different things, things that's going on. Ha- going on and happening and yes. Yeah, let's we'll come do that. back and yeah, we'll be when we come back, we'll be can, yeah, close to wrapping up. We're just going to yes. talk about some headlines when we yes. come back here in yes. just a little bit. All right, okay. that sounds good. We're going to do that when we come back with Laura here on the Vine Morning Show. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. That's from Big Daddy Weave here at Real Life Radio, 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine, your local Christian radio station, and their song called My Story. It is 9.43. It's a Vine morning show on a Monday morning. I'm Mark, and we're visiting with Laura this morning as we do every Monday, and 
A lot of headlines going on throughout the world, oh right, Laura? Oh, my goodness, yes. Where to start? Um, this one is pit- pitiful. Mm-hmm. Um, it's from the source Life News, and here's what the headline says. Abortion activists says pro-life women are just deluded and brainwashed. Oh, my. And here's, here's what it says under this, if you can believe this. The activists also offered these nuggets of wisdom. Fetuses are not babies. Without abortion, you can't live a happy, full and happy life. And forced motherhood is female enslavement. Mm. Mark, Mm -hmm. can you believe in the United States of America, we have people that truly believe fetuses are not babies. Without abortion, you cannot live a full and happy life. Oh, my my. goodness. It's just um, absolutely unbelievable. And, you know, um, I refer to Jim Baker a lot. Love it. Watch the show. He's given us true, unbelievable truths. Mm -hmm. And he had a little baby. Um, His wife, Lori, in previous years had five abortions, and which she hates it. And so there's not a day that goes by that she doesn't think about it and long for them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, any mother would would feel that way after the fact you know it, it's satan that gets you there and then right. afterwards you see the light sure, you know most sure. people do and uh so anyway she said that that um one of the first babies born in this home they created called Lori's house his name's daniel and they brought him on the set and they had him on last week's show and he was five weeks premature and jim baker said look at this baby look at this baby by all rights, he could still have been aborted. Oh my. Just in these late, in the late, late stages. stages. Yes. What is up with that? Mm. It's unbelievable. And and he said that he got dropped because he, um, you know, told some things, showed some things. Um, I believe it was him that some of their staff had taken pictures behind some abortion place where they had just thrown the babies in a garbage can. Oh my. And some of them were just almost but full term. And he got into trouble with some New York station or something that said that was awful for him to do that. Really? Exposing the truth is awful? Yeah, it is nowadays. What's right's wrong and what's wrong's right. And everything's upside down. And he showed um, the little chart like, like um, you know, just like two weeks old and four weeks old and six weeks old. I mean, it, it's a baby. It's a baby, and 12 weeks old was just absolutely, undisputably, just a miniature baby. And it's just so sad that people really believe this, that we that are feeling uh, pro-life are deluded and brainwashed. It, it's just a heartbreak. Mm. And it just shows you the state of our country, once again, where we're living at, what we're in. Um, did you know that the Bible is on the top 10 most challenged books in the schools and the libraries across the nation? Shouldn't it's, even be there, period. No, it shouldn't even be. And, and just to show you where we're at kind of on the time clock and, and where we're at, how we are, you know, the great apostasy, it's here. It's here. I mean, yeah. it's here. Yeah. And we think about all the things just in our country, and our country is the only country that was founded on God and the the um, atrocious things that we are doing, even our military. I mean, you can't put a scripture up. You can't pray in Jesus' name. And what's this bit about a moment of silence? Mark, that makes me so mad, a moment of silence. Now, I know that there are moments where that is may be appropriate but most of the time it is just for us not to have to say jesus name and not offend somebody Mm -hmm. that's that's a lot of the times what they use it for and i just it just makes me mad Mm -hmm. every time i hear let's have a moment of silence i just want to say jesus 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 just over and over and over because often i'm not saying all the time but often it's that what we are trying to avoid in this Mm -hmm. country very, very sad. Um, I listened to Jonathan Khan again talking about, remember the Hindu god Kali mm-hmm. was lit up on the Empire State Building? And he said he believed that it's such a huge thing. It's such a huge span of space. He believed it to be the biggest 
false god um um you know, it's in light, so it's not a structure per se, but he said he believed Illuminated it. Illuminated at yes, that point? Yes, yes, yeah. ever. 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 Oh. And it was on our building in New York City. Mm. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And, you know, we talked about the Ten Commandments being removed. Manger scenes, forbidden to say Merry Christmas. This is where our nation has come to. They've stolen the rainbow, which is God's rainbow, mm-hmm. and turned it into something very different. They're taking down crosses all over the place. Um, off the chaplain's tents in the military, they're removing the crosses. This is what our country is doing. This is what our country is, is fallen to. Um, I looked up something. It was called something about a town hall. Let me try to find this for you. And it gave like seven reasons stating why uh, American America is falling and just some of the crazy things that have happened that have come to our court system that has been disputed and debated it, it it's just unbelievable it's unbelievable there was one um, well we all know the target from the IRS we all know that mm-hmm. scandal um, oh yeah California Christians found not guilty thank God of reading Bibles near government offices should that ever even have gone to court no it's absolutely insane but but they were reading Bibles in public places out loud. And yes, there were actually Americans arrested, this says, for reading the Bible on public property. And then here's what it says underneath it. What do you think the chances are that two Muslims reading the Quran would have been arrested under the same circumstances? That's what this what this um, article states and makes you go, hmm, mm-hmm. doesn't it? Boy, it sure does. I tell you, <laughs> wow. All right. And then we all know about the Colorado baker mm-hmm. faced a jail uh, sentence of a year not to make a cake for a gay wedding. Uh, there was one student at a university, if you could believe this, that his um, professor, they got into an argument and he wanted to try to make him write Jesus' name on a paper and stomp on it. What? 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 That 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 is just as worse as as taking the American flag and stomping on it. Absolutely, and he refused to do it. And which is going on? And it seems like it's going on once a week. You read about it somewhere going is on in the really? country, and, and what a sad situation! Oh my goodness, it's just a heartbreak. And and kids are. They are just raised in school to believe that America is an embarrassment. We should be ashamed of all of the things that we're standing for. We're bigots and and we're self-righteous. And and they're being raised to believe this is not a good place to be. This is not a good thing to stand for morals and and to stand for God. Um, Oh, another thing that happened. um, ABC News printed an article recently from Marco Rubio, and I'll hurry, um, and Rubio mentioned God. I believe he's a, a wonderful, God-fearing man. And they had the audacity to write God's name in small letters. Mm. And they also stated that the New York Times, I believe it was, it was definitely a New York paper, I believe it was the New York Times, is doing the same thing. People, can you believe it? Mm. We have really dipped to the place. We have sunk to an all-time low to where we can't even give God the capital letter. We're going to put a small G and throw him in with all the other pagan gods and the gods that are not true, real living gods because there's only one true living God, and that is God Almighty, and he has a son named Jesus Christ. And it's the one way and the only way, and we are in our articles in the news are degrading him. Mm. Oh. Makes me sick. Oh, I you know, I just I just cringe. Yes. When you when you said that. Oh, yes. just oh. And it makes you frustrated and mad. Absolutely. Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. With Laura this morning here on the Vine Morning Show.